Doc on the Run. We help injured runners run. So today we're going to talk about concrete, asphalt, grass, sand, and all the different running surfaces. Because running surfaces aren't all created equal. Some running surfaces are hard, some are soft, some are smooth and predictable, and others are rough and irregular. Considering the different traits of the path you choose is important if you're hoping to avoid injury or if you're returning to running after an injury and you don't want to get re-injured. If you look around your neighborhood, you will probably see asphalt streets but concrete sidewalks. According to the Federal Highway Administration, about 796,000 miles of roads are asphalt and 158,000 miles are concrete. Concrete is the most commonly used building material in the world. In fact, when it comes to general construction, concrete is used more than twice as much as all other building materials combined. However, concrete is only used for a small percentage of roads and highways. If you live in an extremely hot climate like Texas or Florida, you may find that most of the roads where you live are concrete. Part of the reason for this is that concrete doesn't melt in the heat. Concrete is an extremely hard surface. Of all the possible running surfaces, concrete may be the least forgiving. So if you have a metatarsal stress fracture or some other type of injury that could use a little cushion, concrete should be your very last choice. So if all the roads in your neighborhood are made of concrete, you might want to look for a jogging trail with a softer surface. Because of its color, asphalt is commonly referred to as blacktop. As I just mentioned, asphalt isn't the best material for roads in extremely hot climates. Now, Given that asphalt heats up and gets soft when the sun is blaring is a characteristic that can actually be used to your advantage. On hot days, asphalt is actually relatively soft, but when it's freezing cold outside, asphalt will harden up and stiffen. So the hotter it is outside, the softer the surface when you're running on asphalt. That means that the hotter it is, the less stress on your foot when you land on the asphalt. Now, if you like to run on the road, the odds are good that you're going to be running on asphalt. After all, most of the roads in the United States are surfaced with asphalt. And when it comes to running on paved streets, asphalt is probably your best choice. It's smooth, it's predictable, and it's relatively soft when compared to concrete, brick, or cobblestone. Now, not all roads are paved. Nearly half of the roads in the United States are unpaved, if you can believe that. If you live somewhere out in the countryside, you may have dirt roads nearby where you could run. Dirt roads can make an excellent running surface. If they're well-maintained and they're relatively smooth, you don't have to worry about abruptly, accidentally pronating your foot on an angular surface. Packed dirt is also very soft. Now, that cushion can allow you to run many extra miles without accumulating so much stress that you get an overuse injury like a metatarsal stress fracture. If it's possible to incorporate some packed dirt running surfaces into your regular running routine, it could significantly decrease the amount of force to your musculoskeletal system, and and it certainly has the potential to lower your risk of an overtraining injury. Now, grass is one of the softest surfaces there is. Every time your foot lands on all those leaves of grass, they absorb force and cushion the blow to your feet and legs. Running on grass is one of the recommendations I often hear from coaches. And although there is some merit to the idea of running on a grass surface, it also has risks. The problem is that all those leaves of grass can conceal divots, ruts, and gopher holes that could trip you up. The problem, of course, is that when grass is mowed, it looks flat on top, and all of those potholes hide under the smooth, grassy surface. So if you're running along and you catch one of those hidden obstacles at just the right angle, they can cause a serious injury. Golf courses are so well-maintained that they have the potential to make the perfect running surface. However, almost every golf course I've ever seen has specific signs prohibiting running. So if you go for a long run on your local golf course, you might wind up in an entanglement with an angry greenskeeper. Football fields and soccer fields are also relatively well-maintained, and they're less likely to have hidden obstacles than an unmaintained field like you might find in a park. But be warned, all it takes is an active gopher or a mole to cause trouble and put you at risk of injury. All right, so what about uneven trails? You know, trail running is very popular, and I should probably begin this section with a disclaimer. I love to run on trails. I think it's one of the best ways to enjoy the outdoors. However, it can be dangerous. In fact, irregular trail surfaces have lots of roots and rocks and erosions that can lead to serious injury. When your foot lands on a rock or the side of a large root, your foot can be forcibly pronated or supinated. Frankly, your foot isn't designed to land on its side. 
The forces are spread out better when your foot lands flat. So if you land on an angular surface that shoves your foot in one direction or another, you could get a metatarsal stress fracture, perineal tendonitis, or an ankle ligament sprain. Now, in most cases, these injuries kept them out of training for weeks. To me personally, though, the, the rougher the trail, the more fun. All I can say is proceed with caution. Keep your eyes on the trail and try to land on the flattest sections you can and try not to land on the rocks or the really rough sections that can cause an injury. So what about cobblestone streets? If you land on the edge of the cobblestone, it can really twist your foot in one direction or another. And this can put a huge amount of force on your foot and it could lead to an injury. Having said that, there's actually an argument that irregularity might actually decrease your risk of injury. Concrete is so hard and so flat that you're landing with a large amount of force over and over in exactly the same way. Running on cobblestones varies the position in which your foot lands, so if the cobblestones are relatively uniform and relatively smooth, it might actually be easier on your feet than concrete. A slight irregularity can decrease the overall stress to any given structure in your foot when you run, so in that way, cobblestone streets have the potential to decrease your risk of injury. Running on sand can be one of the best ways to build run-specific fitness. Trying to push off with a surface that seems to fade away underneath you can rapidly build strength. If you've ever tried it, you know that running on loose sand is a brutal workout. Well, many authors also seem to recommend sand for its capacity to diminish forces when you land. And in that respect, sand can reduce your risk of stress-related injuries such as a metatarsal stress fracture. If you decide to run on sand, you have to realize that all sand is not created equal. Even if you look at one specific beach, you'll notice that there are really several different types of surfaces on the beach. Closest to the water where the waves are, well, there, of course, the sand is actually wet. If you're running in the surf, you have to drag your feet through the water, and the sand is extremely soft because it's completely infiltrated with water as the waves come in, crash, and wash the sand away. As you move a little bit higher up along the beach, then you move on to the apron, which is the hard packed sand after the where the tide is going out. And it's extremely smooth, but it still has some water content in it that keeps it relatively soft. Now, depending upon your beach, the apron may be gently sloped or it could be pretty steep. But if it's a very gentle slope, this can make a great running surface. This part of the beach is usually slightly damp and relatively soft. If you walk in bare feet, it will usually leave a perfect imprint of your foot and your toes. Now, this tells you that the surface is relatively stable, but it's also cushioning. That is the ideal part of the beach for a run. But you have to keep in mind that you're running along a sloping surface. So if you run 10 miles in one direction, you're going to be pronating one foot and supinating the other foot for the entire distance. It's actually much better to run one mile out and one mile back, alternating each direction to alter the forces. If you alter the slope every mile or so, you're less likely to get a pronated related overuse injury like perineal tendonitis or plantar fasciitis. When you get further away from the water, you have dry, loose sand. This is the stuff that you find in your kid's sandbox. And this kind of sand is very difficult to walk through. Every time you take a step, your foot slides one direction or another and caves away underneath you. If you look behind you at the footprints, you don't really see the perfect outline of your foot. You're more likely to see an irregular hole in the sand where your foot slid around as you pushed off. Now, although you can run in loose sand, you should expect to work out similar in effort to hill repeats. If you run for a long run in this type of sand, you're almost assured some sort of overtraining injury. It's just too loose, unstable, and irregular to sustain long efforts. Running in snow can be magical. I mean, it, it can be really exhilarating to go for a run in the middle of winter in a beautiful setting. But much like sand, there can be a lot of variability with snow. Hard packed snow that you might encounter on a snowy road can make a really good running surface. If the temperature is just right, it may have some cushion when you land and enough stability so that you can push off without slipping and sliding. When the temperature gets too low, the snow can turn to rock hard ice, and this stuff can be just as hard as concrete. To make matters worse, ice can obviously be as slippery as ice. So slip and fall on the ice and you might wind up in the emergency room with more than just a sprained ankle. As the snow begins to melt, it becomes less stable. Slushy snow doesn't really make a great running surface because it's just too unstable. Much like dry, loose sand, it'll skate away underneath you, and the result is excessive pronation. All that extra pronation can add up to too much risk of an injury. 
If you're traveling and you decide to go for a run in the snow, it isn't something that you do regularly. You have to be careful when you take off on your first adventure. You want to try to confirm that the surface is soft enough to absorb the impact, but not so soft that you'll risk an injury when you push off while you're running. If you go for a walk in the snow when you get ready to run, just look at the path and the trail that you're leaving behind you. And if you can see no image of your running shoe treads, and then that probably means that the snow is either icy or it's frozen hard as a rock. But if you're walking in the snow and it leaves a shallow imprint that just allows you to identify the tread pattern on your running shoes, it should be perfect. The last surface to talk about is a jogging track. Now, although most running surfaces come with a balance of pluses and minuses, there's really only one that has way more advantages than disadvantages. If you go to the stadium at your local high school or college, you'll most oftentimes find a jogging track circling the football field. Those rubberized jogging tracks make the ideal running surface. They're relatively smooth and flat with just enough cushion. Every time you land, you mitigate the forces of gravity. These types of running tracks are soft enough that you can run in rock hard track cleats without risking the uh, pounding that might produce a metatarsal stress fracture. And that's because the tracks are actually made with a rubberized surface. There are really only a couple of disadvantages with cushion jogging tracks. One, it isn't really a disadvantage, but only a problem in terms of perception. Some brand new, freshly surfaced jogging tracks will feel super soft. If you're doing a tempo run or mile repeat, you may have a hard time staying on pace. I myself have run on tracks that are so soft, it feels like I'm having to put out extra effort just to maintain my usual pace. And this isn't something that you imagine. The fact is the deformation of the rubber track caving underneath you when you push off is absorbing energy. That energy would normally be used to propel you forward. So that's why some runners feel like they're running slightly slower on brand new cushy running tracks. The second disadvantage of jogging tracks is they can be kind of boring. And when I'm ramping up in my training, I do mile repeats on a track once a week. And depending upon where I am in my progression, I'll usually be doing maybe 10 or 12 miles on the track. And that probably doesn't seem like a long distance to you. But think about this. If you're doing 10 miles, that's 40 laps, 40 mind-numbing, soul-sucking, tedious laps. And so you're probably thinking, well, then why don't you just do your mile repeats on a road or some other surface that isn't so boring? Well, the answer to that is simple. I know I can run hard with a low risk of injury on a track. I know I can run the exact distance I need and easily visualize it. From a mental fortitude standpoint, it really does help to be able to think, all I have to do is make it around that next corner or to that next line. That's one of the reasons that I really like those rubberized jogging tracks. Now, no matter where you live, you likely have several of these different surfaces to choose from. Of course, you don't have to pick just one. I try to run on at least three different surfaces each week. I run on the road one day during the week, I run on the track for mile repeats on another day, and I run on trails on the weekend. They say variety is the spice of life. Variety may also be the spice of injury reduction. In the same way that cross-training can spread out the forces across a number of different anatomic structures to reduce your risk of injury, altering the running surfaces so you can spread out the forces to your feet can help you stay healthy, run longer, and recover faster. Choose your path wisely. Doc on the Run. We help injured runners run.